Hey, welcome back painting friends. This morning we're going to show you how to paint a field of colorful flowers, field flowers on a warm sunny day. Let's get started. We're going to work with just a simple palette of primary colors and a couple of round brushes. I have here a size 10 and a size 5. And I'm going to start with a 6 by 9 sheet of cold press rough watercolor paper. I've got my water, clean water, and some paper towels. And we're going to begin by picking up our red color from the primary palette. And the red that I'm using is active Actually, an opera pink, a really bright, uh, bright pink hue, and I want a lot of paint in my brush. I'm going to add water and quite a bit of pigment because I'll spatter or put flecks of paint right across the center of my page of paper. I'll tap it along the edge of my extra brush and just tap down. Just sprinkle some paint, little drops, right in the center. There we go. While the dots are still wet, let's take the brush. We can rotate the paper if we need to. And we're just going to make some quick little shapes will use the paint that is spattered onto the surface with our wet brush just to pull some little abstract petal shapes onto the paper and it's the dots of pigment on the paper that is going to supply the paint for our flowers. So we don't want to actually think about them being flowers. We just want to make some pretty impressions of flowers growing in an open field. They're turned in lots of different directions. Sometimes you just see an oval shape. Sometimes you might just see a little dot for some opened buds, so little buds maybe that haven't opened up into flowers yet. And as always, we want to strive for a variation of size, shape, and color. So I'm moving my brush on the side in many different directions so that I have a variety. If, it, if my brush starts to get a little dry, I can just pick up some water in it because some of the petals and objects can just be painted with a little colored water, almost ghost flowers or ghost petals. There's enough pigment on the paper to carry some color so that you'll still see it when it dries. Some little oval shapes very quickly. You're not going to get all of those dots, but that's all right too, because any little spatters that are left over will just add to the, the action and animation of the field. Give some life to it. Once again, we want some light and some dark. Just an abstract impression of a field of flowers. And so I've rinsed out my brush completely and I'm going to pick up the second color from our primary palette. We're going to use blue next. And I've got a cobalt blue here, but you could use cerulean or um, magnese, manganese blue or whatever blue strikes your fancy. But the uh, cobalt blue that I have here is nice and clean and pretty. 
So we're going to work with cobalt blue. And I'll tap. Maybe not quite as much. Lot my brush. And I want these flowers to be a little bit smaller, so I'm going to take my smaller brush here. I will rinse it, pick up a little bit of that watery blue just in the tip of the brush and blot it out because once again we're going to use the spatters to pull in some little occasional abstract shapes. Sometimes just little ovals, little, little smudges of color. They're still going to read as flowers to the viewer's eye. And where the little spatters have gone over the pink, it's going to make a really pretty violet color to add even more interest and variety to the flowers. Just use the side of the brush to pull in those little abstract spots of blue. dance all over. Notice that I'm working all over. I'm not just building in one place. I'm working all over the paper so that uh, I don't get into a pattern. I don't want a distinct pattern. I just want these things to fall organically. Some to the left and some to the right. Variety of size, variety of value, light or dark. And we have our variety of color. There we go. So the third color on our triad of course is yellow. I've got a lemon yellow here or a yellow light. And for this um, right now I'm not going to spatter this across but I'm going to take my yellow with some water just make a little wash and just kind of blot on some little yellow shapes here. Just mix them in between and they might be flowers or they could be butterflies or maybe they'll be bumblebees they could be almost anything but just in the spirit of keeping it loose and abstract we wanted to play a little yellow to keep with that primary palette And if it overlaps the blue, it will have, take on a green cast. If it overlaps the pink, it'll take on a little orange cast. So I don't want too much of that here. I may just add some dots here and there, just on any of those little shapes that look like they're actually forming flowers, I could drop in a little color to represent some center shapes. So I think this is looking pretty good. There's nothing uh, really tight about it. It's very loose and the colors are, are nicely scattered throughout the paper. Let's go back to the larger brush, the larger round brush, now I'm going to make a green for the grass coming up from the bottom, but I'm going to use the side of the brush. I'm going to drag it on the side of the brush. We'll make our green, one of the secondary colors on our palette, but we're going to make the green with the yellow 
and just a touch of the cobalt blue to give us a really uh, pretty light yellow green. And I've got the brush at a very low angle. It's very low. Um, and I just want to pull some of this up from the bottom so that it skips and leaves a lot of dry space. Fill your brush with a generous amount of water and pigment. We're working on a dry paper here. And this is uh, came from an arches pad, so it is quite it is quite dry and absorbent. And the rough texture though really complements the the uh, woodland kind of wild field flower feeling here. And the grass can go in lots of different directions. Once again, keep it on the side of the brush. Pick up paint as you need it. And I like to kind of mix it mix the paint uh, on my palette as I go along so that I don't have a consistent color all the way through. It's nice to have variety. Now I use the point of my brush just to pull some stems up through and maybe some grass here and there through the through the flowers. Just the point of the brush. Keep it free. There we go. Just loose. Maybe a little foliage in there. I'm still working with a lighter green, mostly yellow, just a little touch of blue, nice and bright. There we are. And to get a darker green, of course, all we need to do is take that same mix, the same yellow green, and add more blue to it. More blue will give us a darker green and a cooler green. That gives us variety of temperature. Warm green, and here is some cool green with the blue added to it. Up on the side of the brush, and then pull with the point. So we're not covering everything up completely. I think we could be a little bit denser in color, a little more density with the pigment. So I'll add more color to my wet brush. Here we go. Now this uh, paper, this is a half of a 9 by 12 sheet, so it's 6 by 9, and I will be able to cut this in half and get two uh, 6 by 4 and a half pieces, which uh, can either be matted into an 8 by 10 frame with a four by six opening, or um, it would be the face of uh, two greeting cards I could get out of it, 
or I could actually just fold this right in half and have a um, just a single greeting card. I would put a liner inside of it to uh, finish it off, maybe trim up the edges a little bit. So if I want to break up any hard um, or solid areas, I can rinse out my brush and just with the point of the brush, pull, I'll blot my brush a bit, there we go, and pull through any of that paint while it's still wet and lift out some of the dark color just to give another layer of dimension to the grass that is growing up from the bottom of the bottom of the card, the bottom of the paper. So we're just about done with this wonderful quick little project. Need a little bit more interest at the bottom and something to tie it together. So I'll take back the handle of my brush and um, with a clean brush, rinse it out. I'm going to pick up some strong blue. I'm going to pick up a little more blue and do a final spatter of blue down in the grass. And it's okay if it skips and hops over up into the air. And then I'll make an orangey color just to add a little more life to the yellow that's up in the top. And I'll need to clean out my yellow. It's kind of green looking right now. So I'm going to clean that out. Get some clean water. I want a clean yellow with just a touch of my red, I'm using Opera in this palette, to get an orangey color that makes a really pretty orange. And I'll tap some orange into the flower area and into the grass. Now the grass is a little wet, so this is going to bleed and expand. That's going to look good. With the point of the brush, I'll just take and pump up a little bit of that yellow just here and there. Give it a little more brightness so it's not quite so flat. Not all of it. Maybe add a little bit of orange to some of the obvious flower centers throughout. There we go. These little characters look like they're just sort of suspended in midair, so we'll add some stems. more grass and there we are just beautiful someone is going to be really pleased to get a greeting card made from this wonderful field of flowers thank you for joining me until we meet again I'm painterly yours Lorraine Palex